Today I'm going to share with you the modern way to chop firewood. All you need are stylish tactical gloves, something to show off your guns, and a new smartphone app. Axes? <laughs> thing of the past. Everybody, this is Praxis. I've wanted for a while to do a video about sort of the pre-logistics of getting ready to do wood fires to warm your house. A lot of people have wood stoves in their houses or fireplaces in their houses. They don't really use that much and there's a lot that goes into kind of getting the fuel ready and, and lighting them. And we're not going to talk about lighting and the burn and everything like that today, but what I do want to talk about is getting the fuel ready. Now the first thing I would say is that the process, when done the best, doesn't happen 10 minutes before you want to have a fire. It's something that you do months in, a, in advance, getting wood uh, cut and ready and stacked and drying so that it's ready for you to burn. Uh, when you're burning wet wood, it creates a lot of uh, creosote up in your chimney that can create chimney fires. Also, you just don't get as much heat out of the wood because it's using a lot of its heat energy to just boil off that water. So you want to have wood that's as dry as possible. Obviously, wet wood is better than no wood at all, but when at all possible, stuff that's more dry is going to be better. Where we're going to be jumping into the process here today is after the wood has been cut, I use a chainsaw, it's an electric chainsaw that I power off of my solar panels. I cut a bunch of wood, uh, I cut it all about 16 inches long because my wood stove can accept 16 inch logs. Uh, and I have that up inside of a pile under a tarp uh, and it's been drying and I made sure I had lots of air moving through it in the summertime, try to just get it as dry as possible. Because one of the uh, kind of the ironies of splitting wood, and that's what we're about to do today, one of the ironies of splitting wood is that it's much easier to split wood when it's dry, but it wood also dries much better after it's been split. So <laughs> it's kind of the situation where if you can split the stuff right after you've cut it, that's good because it'll dry faster. But at the same time, if you're having trouble splitting stuff, know that it's going to split a lot better after it's dried for a while. Just because it comes, it becomes more brittle and less malleable and bendy. It doesn't it accommodate bending when you're trying to split it. It will just split and crack. The tools that we're going to be using, I mentioned I used a chainsaw earlier, but the tools we're going to be using today are this splitting axe is number one, and this is different from a regular axe because it has these extra kind of kicks off to the side. Now, you can use a regular axe for uh, chopping, uh, like splitting wood. That works pretty well, but one of these things, the first time I used this, I used it on a log that I had been having trouble using a regular axe on, and this went through so easily I gasped when it went through. It was like, oh, it was amazing. So having a tool like this can make your job a lot easier. You can get a lot more work done with the same amount of effort. Really great tool. The other tools we're going to be using, in case this thing doesn't work very well, is a splitting wedge, which is just a piece of metal like this with these little kicks off to the side, a splitting wedge. And to drive the splitting wedge, you could use the back side of your... Uh, your axe, if you get a nice flat backside, or I'm going to be using a six pound sledgehammer. I think six pounds is a good weight for me because heavier than that uh, and it would just be unwieldy. I'm not like a, a super muscular guy, so six pounds allows me to have a lot of control going down. I feel like it's enough weight to do what I want to do all the time, and I choose one that's uh, not lighter than this because if it was lighter I'd feel like you wouldn't get as much power out of it. So those are the three tools I'm going to be using today. These are only in case that one doesn't work, which very frequently it does not. When you're going to be splitting your logs, this is always a good sign. How you can see there's all these little crack patterns in here. That means the wood's already starting to dry. It's already starting to get a little brittle. That's going to be the easiest crack. In terms of which way you're going to put this when you chop it, I've found that uh, having them upside down, which is root side up, if you can kind of tell, and oftentimes there's a little bit of taper, so having the wider end facing up so the roots would be up there, uh, it tends to split better that way. I'm not sure if it's just the way that it grows or whatever, but I feel like I've done some pretty impartial tests and I feel like generally that works better. That doesn't mean that's always going to be the case and it doesn't mean that doing it the other way around is stupid or that you can't do it at all, but I find this tends to be a little bit easier. So the first thing that you want to do is figure out what size chunks you want to have in your wood stove. 
cutting it the least amount of times possible is probably a good thing. So what I usually try to do is to kind of pre-visualize how many pieces I want to cut this into. For my wood stove, honestly, just cutting this into two pieces would probably be fine, but I'm going to try to cut it into four just for this video so we can have some extra experience. In terms of my anticipation of how this is going to go, I don't see a lot of knots in this wood. Uh, knots or branches coming out can really make uh, a tough job of splitting. In fact, the one I did just before this is this one right here, and it has a limb that was coming out right here, and that ran right through all this, and it really just glues the whole thing together. Having limbs coming out of your firewood makes it a lot of work to split it. This one looks like it's going to be pretty easy, but a lot of this tree has had a lot of uh, tiny little knots in it, so we'll see what, what it's like when we get in there. Uh, I would suggest if you don't do this very much, stretching a little bit ahead of time can make a big difference. Even if you don't feel like you injure yourself, just doing kind of uh, repetitive, stressful movements can, like, you know, pull out a shoulder, and it may not happen while you're doing it, but it could happen, you know, the next day or something like that, and then, you know, your arm's out of commission. In fact, this arm here, I don't know what I did to it, but, it, like, for two or three days, this one was like, I couldn't do that with this arm. I don't know what the deal was, but it's back in commission today, so I'm going to be doing this, and <laughs> hopefully I don't strain it again. So I'm going to do my first split, maybe right down the middle. That's the easiest place to do it, uh, going right across the center line, because there's all the... Uh, the cleavage in the wood is going to all crack that way, and if you can do it that way, uh, it's going to be the least amount of chops. So we'll try it through there first. I usually just have my, my feet about shoulders width apart, and what you really want to do is, as much as possible, let the weight of the tools do the work for you. So you're not forcing them down, you're just giving them energy along their path and letting the weight slide through. So let's, let's do a hit on this one, we'll see. Okay, and you can get a sense right off where the next step is going to be. I'm looking down at this thing right here, and I'll bring it over to you. And you can see a crack forming right across here. So I'm thinking that this is fairly likely that that's going to split okay. So what I'm going to do is get the, the axe out, and the easiest way to do that is just kind of hold the wood and push down on the handle. Use the leverage of the handle. Don't grab up here, grab back here, and it makes it fairly easy to pull them back out. I'm going to hit it again, just about the same spot. Just like in Titanic, with, uh, you remember Jack was handcuffed and, and Rose did the... Good. Now try to hit the same mark again, Rose. You can do it. Same spot. And there we go. That one was pretty simple. Next step is... Uh, across this way, so we'll quarter it. And again, just letting the weight of the, uh, the axe do the job. You know, I'm not power driving it down, just letting the weight go right through it. I'm gonna take that bark off there. Yeah, we say bark's not a really good thing to burn. It does smoke a little, but it does burn. Here we go. That was really satisfying. <laughs> They're not always that easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another one that I think is going to be a little bit more difficult so we can talk about what it's like to have to use that wedge. Okay, we've got another one here right now, and this one is going to be a little more challenging. Right in this area here, there's this bump that's coming off the side there. It looks like there was a limb going up there, and looking down into it, I can see that there are two cores here. There's one right here where the uh, there was a a uh, branch coming here, and then there's another one right here. So there's a split here. This is, a, in fact, you can see the, the terminating line between the two branches. This is going to be a particularly difficult job in splitting, but we can still do it. All right, the first step here is to kind of evaluate where you want to take your first bite out of it. And you want to attack it at the place where it's going to be the weakest, uh, just so you don't have to work that hard to get this thing apart. The, t the most difficult parts of this thing, we don't have to necessarily break apart. We just need to get the difficult parts that are all mangled together small enough so that that can be put into our wood stove at, you know, at whatever size our wood stove will accept. So the idea here is you want to just peel off all the easy chunks and just leave the knotted, gnarled thing to just burn. That'll burn just fine. But we just need to get it small enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose some of the edges around here uh, from the side that looks like it's the main trunk. And I think that that's this backside 
over here. This is where the other branch is coming up here. So I'm going to try to just take this piece right here off. I'm seeing some little knots and things in the wood here. That's going to make it a little bit challenging, but I think I can probably get this off easier than anything else. All right. So again, same thing as before. Don't throw a lot of oomph into it. Don't injure yourself. Just let the weight of the tools go through it. And, you know, if you need to power a few through, that's fine. But, you know, no reason to kill yourself when you don't. Here we go. All right. This is looking like it's not going to be so bad. I got some spidering lines coming out here. I'm just going to give this another hit. I'm going to hold the log with one hand and go way down the handle to wiggle it out. There we go. And I'm just going to give it another hit in the same spot. I missed. I was off by about a centimeter. Try it again. Still useful though, still put a shock wave through, still broke some things up, but it's best if you can hit it right in the same spot. Let's see. There we go. So this one's looking like it's going to come off. I'm going to hit that one more time. There you go. And then I'll just take the back end here and give it a tap. There we go. And pop that one right out. What I'm going to do next, since I've weakened this whole side, I'm going to come around the side here and try to nip off another little piece. Try to nip off this bit right here. All right, here we go. Sometimes they're really easy. All right. And that's the idea. Shave, shave, and just kind of keep going around the periphery here. I'll make sure we get a chance to use the wedge on this one, though, because I want to make sure that you get to see what that's like. Here we go. Coming over around this side. This is some pretty dry wood. And I'm going to stop here. I'm going to spin around to the other side, because down here, it starts getting all naughty through here. And coming around here, I think I'm just going to pull off little, little sheets. So I'm going to come to this other side. Just try to get this whole face right off there. Same deal as before. This one could be tricky because I'm right between those two limbs. We'll see how it works. There we go. So that was so solid, I didn't hear any cracking at all. I'm going to abandon this attempt here because I think that there's probably a lot of other places I can attack this thing. This one didn't give it all. It's uh, not worth fighting for, so I'm going to go someplace else. Again, hold the log and give it a wiggle out. I think what I'm going to try to do is come around this side and work some bits off this limb. Let's see what that's like. Okay, I felt a little give in that one. I'm seeing a little cracking. So I'm going to work at this again. Same spot. All right, that was more towards center. There wasn't as much cracking on that one. I'm going to try to aim again. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of cracking here, but not much. What I'm going to try to do is come around to this side, do one other off angle, and see if I can be productive kind of coming in this way. If not, I'm going to try that wedge on what I've got right there, because it's giving a little bit, and I think the wedge could power through it. Okay, I'm going to get one more hit there, because what I want to do is cleave off this whole side. I've got some cuts there, I've got some cuts here. And I want to just get that spread out as much as I can so I can get the wedge in there. Here we go again. All right, time for the wedge. So now that I've already got some uh, chops in the top here, it's easy for me to take the wedge and just place it into one of them that I made with the axe. I'm going to place it in in a nice vertical way, and I'm going to take the sledgehammer and just tap it in. Now it's snug in there. I'll give it a few more taps with a little more weight on it. This sledgehammer has two sides. It's a rounded side and a flat side. I was using the rounded side, but flat side tends to work better for this. The rounded side is to deliver a lot of punch to a very small area. So you can see, I'm not, you know, using my back, throwing a ton of weight into this. Just little taps. That doesn't mean this is where we're going to stay, but at the moment, these are pretty productive. It's starting to split. All 
All right, you can see here, I move some of the bark, there's a split coming right through here. So this is working. I'm gonna give it some harder hits, see if we can drive it in faster. And again, just letting the weight come down on it. That's a good sound. You're hearing the little cracking noises as it starts to split. And I'm not, I'm not killing myself. Just letting the weight of the sledgehammer tap it in. You could go crazy, but that can lead to injuries and then you're out of commission for a little bit. I could do that all day. Okay, wedge is in there. One thing to be careful of, when the wood is split open this far, don't stick your hand down into it. There's no telling what it's gonna do. There's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of tension in there, and the last thing you want, I'm sure there's other things you want even less than this, but you don't want it clamping down in your hand because it'd be crazy to get your hand out of there, especially if you're by yourself. So don't put your hand into these, these cracks and crevices as they're pulled open. So you can see it's got it pretty wide through there. I'm gonna turn it over here. I'm gonna just keep tapping it through. And there we go. So that was something that was feeling really impossible if I were to just use this alone. But having that wedge allowed it to power through. I didn't use a lot of muscle. I didn't use a lot of strength. Just use the six pounds on here and the kinetic energy that's created on a nice long sweep. So I'm gonna finish this thing up and get some more firewood into the house. Burning wood is a great way of just creating for yourself a sense of independence, that you're not dependent on whether the power systems are up, you're not dependent on whether there's fuel delivery. This is something that you can always create for yourself and it comes right from the earth around us. So we're not dependent on the system, just on the ecosystem, which is why I like to protect the ecosystem because if you support it, it's going to be there in a pinch to support you when you need it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.